I mean, it was like seeing aliens. Hey, what's up, guys? Mike with PTP Gun. Ryan Gas. Of course, we got Ryan Gas at Ryan R. Gas everywhere, right? So uh, check it out, guys. We do a lot of YouTube searching. We do a lot of stuff in the firearms community. We're always looking for ways to bring new information out to people. The problem is there's always people that are putting bad information out. There's people who have no business talking about guns that have entire gun channels or people that are talking about gun safety that have no business talking about it. And there's some stuff going on in the news right now. All right. This whole Alec Baldwin situation. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you guys are familiar with it, Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin killed somebody on a movie set uh, basically a month and a half ago. All right. Um, So Ryan calls me up this morning. He said, hey, I saw this video. It came on ABC News. It's over on YouTube right now. Uh, and it's Alec Baldwin giving his interview. So he's like, hey, Alec Baldwin's full of shit. I think he's lying. He's like, meet me at the range. I'm going to prove it. And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Let's get out to the range and do this stuff. So what this video is is this, guys. All right, It's going to be kind of a reacts video, kind of a commentary over it's basic YouTube stuff. All right, So you're already familiar with that. But I'm going to be playing the... Uh, Alec Baldwin interview. We've got two bullshit buttons right here. So at any time, Ryan and I can call bullshit. And uh, and then we have a lot of video from the range today that we're actually going to overlay on what Alec Baldwin's saying. To show you what he's saying is bullshit. Yeah. Hey, guys, what's up? Mike here with PTP. Of course, we got... Ryan Gass. Ryan Gass. Hey, guys, uh, this video today, it's going to be kind of debunking Alec Baldwin's bullshit story that he's feeding to the nation through ABC news. Um, so if you're into that kind of stuff, you found the right channel. Hit that subscribe button. Cause there's gonna be more of this coming. That's right, guys. Make sure you smash that subscribe button. Um, share it with the buddy too, if you find value in what we're doing here. But so Ryan calls me up this morning. He said, Hey Mikey, he said, Hey, do you see what, uh, Alec Baldwin said on ABC news? I said, no, I haven't. He said, all right, send me a link. And then he said, meet me at the range. And I said, oh, yeah, let's do it. He said, Alec Baldwin's full of shit, and I can prove it. All right? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to show the ABC interview. Uh, Again, there'll be links down to that, full attribution. We didn't make that content. Uh, But we did. We are going to overlay some shots from the range. We also have two bullshit buttons. So anytime Alec Baldwin says something that's bullshit or violates one of the four fundamental safety rules, we're going to call bullshit on that. Uh, So, guys, stay tuned. Let's get right into it. All right, so what we're seeing here, again, this is the uh, YouTube interview, the ABC interview featured on YouTube. So let's go ahead and just kick that off. It was the 12th day of their 21-day shoot. That day, I did exactly what I've done every day uh, on that movie. Baldwin was preparing for his next scene, a shootout inside this wooden church. Set the scene right before that happened. You're sitting in a pew in the church. Right. What's the scene supposed to be? The scene is the two two guys are there who have got me, uh, uh, you know, cornered, and they think I'm shot pretty bad, and I'm kind of wilting, and they uh, they have a gun, and then the sound outside distracts them, and I then draw the gun at a cross draw out of my holster, pull the gun up like that. All right, bullshit. For one, not that it's not. For me, that's a safety violation, right? So if you watch how he draws, he certainly flags his arm. Now, again, that's not a big deal. And Ryan told me to be nice. And I would draw uh, the gun, uh, cross draw out of my holster, pull the gun up like that. Maybe. And start to maybe cock I'm the pistol seeing cut. something. I'm handed a gun and someone declares, they said, this is a cold gun. Dave Halls. Oh, the, 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 the first AD. In my years on the sets of film, hot gun meant that there was a charge in there and cold gun meant there was nothing in there. When he's saying this, this is a cold gun, what he's saying to everybody on the set is you can relax. Bullshit. Um, and maybe in his mind, you can relax, but you can't relax. What he's saying is, oh, well, if you have, if you begin to give a cold gun, you can be complacent. If anyone's been around firearms or even in the military or whatever, complacency kills. And yep, he absolutely. is absolute proof that complacency kills. He just told you, hey, when somebody hands me a cold gun, I get complacent. I don't care. Uh, I get nonchalant. What is the word he actually used? Uh, cold. Yeah, but what I'm saying, he said, uh, relax. He said, relax. Yeah, relax. That's you right. know, when, I, when I'm handing a cold gun, I relax. I, you know, whatever. Um, and that's part of where he went wrong. Absolutely. The gun is empty. That's what cold gun means. Well, cold gun means there's no charge in there. There could be dummy rounds. A dummy round looks like a real bullet, but is completely inert. It contains no explosive charge. 
and you were rehearsing that scene. Was it an actual rehearsal? There's some disagreement about that, whether it was a formal rehearsal at that time. This is a marking rehearsal, where you, I'm gonna show her, she's standing next to the camera. She's like this, you're me. She's got a monitor here. The camera is here filming that way. She takes a monitor that, his, that is his monitor, the operator, and turns it toward her. It swivels, and she says to me, hold the gun lower. Go to your right. Okay, right there. All right, do that. Now show it a little bit lower. And she's getting me to position the gun. Everything is in her direction. She's guiding me through how she wants me to hold the gun for this angle. And I, I draw the gun out, and I find a mark. I draw the gun out, I find a cut. And what's really urgent is the gun wasn't meant to be fired in that angle. So if you're shooting directly into the camera lens, you're not aiming I'm not shooting into the camera lens. I'm shooting just off. Just off. Right, in her direction. I'm holding the gun where she told me to hold it, which ended up being aimed right in below her armpit. It was what I was told, I don't know. This was a completely incidental shot, an angle that may not have ended up in the film at all. But we kept doing this, and so then I said to her, now in this scene, I'm gonna cock the gun. All right. I said, do you wanna see Pay attention to this man's hand, all right? That, and she said yes. So I take the gun and I start to cock the gun. I'm not gonna pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun, I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. At the moment. Keep going, keep going. The decisive That was moment. the moment the gun went off, yeah. That was the moment the gun went off. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So no. you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at anyone and pull a trigger at them, never. never. That was the training that I had. You don't point a gun at me and, and pull the trigger. On day one of my instruction in this business, people said to me, never take a gun and go click, 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 because even though it's incremental, you damage the firing pin on the gun if you do that. Don't do that. And Hall's attorney told ABC News that he was watching and agrees that... Al all right, all right. I want to show... All right, so... What he's saying here, and we got to go back to about 240, guys. What he's saying is that he never squeezed, pressed, pulled the trigger, all right? But I want to show you guys something, all right? All right, guys, so now we're going to, uh, we've, we've got both screens up here. We're going to show you what we think the story that he's saying right here, all right? So uh, pay attention here, guys. We're going to go ahead and get both these started, try to get the timing just right. So I take the gun, and I start to cock the gun. I'm not going to pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun. I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun, and the gun goes off. I let go of the hammer of the gun, and the gun goes off. At the moment. So what All we right. see there is, I, you know, uh, in the in the video, it's actually my, my finger, my hand, my gun. Um... Your finger's off the trigger, and you pull the hammer back, it won't go forward at all. It can't. It's just the way single action revolvers are built. Um, I pulled it back. That's, that's first click. Second click is where it's half clock, uh, half cocked, so you can you know freely uh, spin the cylinder. And that's there. And then, boom. This is where you can go to the fire position. But it won't fire or go forward at all unless you have the trigger pulled or you pull the trigger. That's right, guys. All right, so this is... So Ryan, a lot of people nowadays, mo I would argue that most people are more familiar with a semi-automatic handgun yeah. than they would be with a revolver, and then even on top of that, a single action revolver, Oh yeah, right? Yeah, no, I, I don't know that I, I've obviously taught thousands of students over the years, and I've never seen a student bring a single action revolver to class for the concealed carry class. Right, right. Um, so just so everybody knows that we're all on the same page, right? A single action, the trigger does one thing. Release that, is that re trigger. Release the trigger. Uh, release the hammer. The trigger does one thing and oh, release the hammer. Fucking... No, that's fine. Words. Yeah, words matter. Uh, on a double action, the trigger does two functions. It's, it can do two functions. Yeah. One, it could actually cock the hammer, and then two, it releases the hammer or the firing mechanism, whatever that is. Yep. Right? Um, it Without having some kind of mechanical failure, there's no way to release a hammer on a single action revolver without squeezing the trigger or having it pulled the entire time or having it pulled the entire time. Yeah. Um, which is what I, we think yeah. likely is a good I think in general, that's common amongst people that have zero to little experience with firearms. For some reason, uh, they feel like when they grab the firearm, their finger goes on the trigger. Like, it, Oh, that's, you know, it's my trigger finger. That's a trigger. So I must have to put my finger there at all times. No. Like I explained class to people, 
uh, your finger, yes, this does pull the trigger, uh, but it lives on that frame until you are ready to fire, and then you apply pressure to that trigger to the rear, you release pressure to the uh, to front, and then if you need to you know, pull the trigger again, you do that again. Uh, whenever you're done firing, you take your finger back off that trigger. Your finger is only applying or releasing pressure from that trigger. Uh, but again, like I said, some people, they will put their finger on that trigger and it'll just stay there. Uh, whether it's actually pulling the trigger or not, that, you know, that's, that's you know, case by case. But uh, what I think happened, well, uh, should we get, should we jump ahead? Yeah, let's just jump right into it. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, guys. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go back to the video and see if we could test a hypothesis a little bit here. Now, I want you to pay attention to the frame here with Ryan's hand. So we just showed you what happens or what Alec Baldwin claimed happened, which was he went through the action of uh, drawing back the hammer on the firearm and then released it and the gun went bang. That's what he's claiming. But if you look here, this is kind of what we, we think happened was that um, and as Ryan just mentioned, we think the guy had his, his finger on the trigger the entire time. And um, with single action revolvers, uh, the draw on the trigger. So if it's if it's not cocked or even half cocked or anything like that, you will not be able to feel a difference in the trigger. It's not until you start on most, okay? Now you, your firearm may be a little bit different, but from my experience, when you start, you will not notice a difference in the length of the trigger draw until you begin cocking that hammer back. So it, you may be surprised to realize that, oh shit, you know, this hammer is in go mode right now, right? Because you won't feel it in the trigger until, until it's too late. Uh, so let's go ahead and what we're going to show you here is what we think happened. So try to get some creative click in See here. that? And she said, yes. So I take the gun and I start to cock the gun. I'm not going to pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun. I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. I let go of the hammer of the gun, the gun goes off. At the moment. All right, let's run that back for a second, guys. Um, again, I'm going to show you what I want you to pay attention to is you'll notice the moment the gun goes off, pay attention to Ryan's trigger finger. It's not going to squeeze at all, right? It, you, you will not see his trigger finger move at all. In fact, I think we have a different shot from a different angle. Let me go ahead and bounce over here. It's probably better right there. All right, let me just, I just want to try to get the timing right. Apologize if the timing's not perfect on this guy. <laughs> Um, go ahead and start here. And she said, yes. So I take the gun and I start to cock the gun. I'm not going to pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun. I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she said, and I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. At the moment. The decisive that was the moment. moment the gun went off. Yeah, that was the moment the gun went off. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So no. you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. I, I would never point a gun at him. So he, he's not necessarily wrong. Because in my, I, got, I always say, and I, I press this in him, he fucking hates it. <laughs> words matter. So he's not necessarily wrong, or he's not, and, and he may not even be per se lying. Um, he may have not realized, because you'd be surprised. Like, how do you not realize? It? You'd be surprised. Uh, he had his finger on the tree. He's holding the tree to the rear. Um, he was cocking the hammer back, not realizing what he was also doing. Um, and again, he's pulling a hammer, pulling a hammer, pulling a hammer, pulling a hammer. When he's done with it, he lets go of it. And because that trigger's been depressed the entire time, when it goes forward, it goes, first off, it can go forward because he has a trigger. Pulled. And because the trigger's pulled to the rear, uh, it slams forward and goes off. Um, so he's not necessarily lying. He didn't make a conscious... He, you know, based on what he's saying, he may have not made a constant decision of cocking, 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 put my finger on the trigger, now apply pressure to the rear, gun goes off. It may not have happened yeah. like that. Like I said, he might have had his finger on the trigger the entire time, maintaining pressure, not even really realizing it. Just like uh, when people, because people say, oh, how do you not realize that? It's kind of like um, when people are done shooting, they leave their finger on the trigger, they go to reholster, and all of a sudden they shot themselves in the thigh. Right, yep. same kind of thing. They didn't mean to do it. They didn't realize what they were doing. They weren't thinking. Uh, they weren't being aware of you know what they're doing. And and uh, again, they they were being complacent. He's being complacent, and somebody got killed. Right. And there's so many of those fundamental you know firearm rules that were broken. Now Ryan and I kind of went back and forth about this one earlier when we're when I was trying to be like, all right, that's definitely bullshit. This is definitely bullshit. You know, 
some people tell you, and, and in different, you know, in Hollywood, um, I think even T-Bone, or uh, from T-Bone and Heather, I don't know if you guys caught that, but Ryan was on the uh, T-Bone and Heather, at least he interviewed with them. Uh, we were talking about this earlier, but even T-Bone was saying, like, T-Bone and Heather, Southern Maryland, uh, what channel is that? 98.3. 98.3, the star. All right, so if you're on the West Coast, probably doesn't matter to you. But anyhow, in Hollywood, they're trained to point just off character. Right now, I understand in some scenes, right, you may have to point your firearm at an individual, mm -hmm. although it kind of makes me sick thinking about that. Yeah, you know it what does. I'm saying? Because yeah. it's been so ingrained in me. There's been, you know, Ryan and I probably, I don't know how many times Ryan screwed up. I didn't screw up a whole lot, but everybody screws up once and gets caught by the drill sergeant. There were times I had to do a lot of freaking push ups, and I didn't even think I flagged anybody. Somebody saw something, anyhow. You just don't point it at it. It makes it cringeworthy. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So, I mean, not only did he not inspect the firearm whenever it was handed to him to ensure that it was a clear firearm, right? Not, you know, and so you almost kind of want to blame both of them. You want to blame the person that handed it to him for not checking it first. Oh, yeah. And then blame Alec Baldwin. Well, there's a part, and we'll get to it here in a second and stuff, but, like, uh, the interviewer, I don't know the guy's name is, uh, but he says, well, what do you say, Alec Baldwin, to people like George Clooney? George Clooney says something along the lines of, you know, whenever I'm handing a gun on a set, and how he's been doing it for years is, you know, when somebody hands me a gun, they show me it's clear. I show them it's clear. We show another person and stuff. Uh, and then when they when he's done with the scene, he does the same thing in reverse and gives it back to them, right. uh, which is kind of how I deal with in class and stuff. If I'm doing yep. something on, like, a, a classroom day and stuff, before I go to show anything with the fireman and stuff, uh, which, first off, I don't point at anybody in the first place at all. It doesn't matter if it's clear or not. Uh, but even if, it's, uh, even if it is clear and even if I am not pointing at anybody, I still have a couple different people check and I tell people and I explain this in the class why do I have you check her check him check why do I have all these people check when I just checked it because you Be may make a mistake because one I make a mistake so first off I check the farm I have another person make uh, check that farm and I have another person check the farm as well right. because mistakes can happen uh, even after having three people check to be quite honest even having three people check there is a possibility that there could still be a live round in there and, it, and something unsafe could happen. But that's why, one, I still point the fireman in a safe direction that's right. uh, and all that type of stuff. So um, I'm talking, there's, there's been two fundamental firearms rules broken already, right? Yeah. In my mind, now, Ryan disagrees a little bit about the pointing it at somebody. It's Hollywood. Not on disagree, but I understand it's a necessary evil. Yeah, just necessary like evil, we're, exactly. we're always brought up, just like, all right, just like we're brought up uh, with fire safety rules and this and that. Uh, we're also brought up with like certain things you do and you don't do while driving. Right. Well, people that do, you know, that say drive NASCAR or there are in uh, Nitro Circus with uh, Trash Pastrana, they kind of break those rules. But it's kind of one of those necessary evils in the business. Uh, I'm not, I don't like it. it. Like you said, it's cringeworthy to point yeah. a fire at another person. But I do recognize that it's probably a necessary evil in the business. I don't know how you get around it. So... Not clearing the firearm first, right? Pointing a firearm at something that you don't intend to destroy. And then, you know, never put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to squeeze it, right? Mm -hmm. Until you made a conscious decision to shoot something. Yeah. So that's three. And then what we'll find out, I think, you know, I mean... He didn't, he didn't know his target and what lie behind. He didn't know his target what lie behind. Because not only did he shoot the uh, the cinematographer, he shot the, the the guy behind her too. That's right. So two birds, one stone. To me, this is a failure of all four fundamental safety laws. Right, the fundamentals. Yeah, uh, if it will. was very negligent of him. Well, he's Absolutely. not a professional. Like Let's go ahead it doesn't. Back. You don't. It, it doesn't take um, much to know what the fire safety rules are. Like I have. Fire uh, training videos on our uh, ptpgun.com YouTube. That's right. That you can, if nothing else, he can go watch that or anybody else's too. I'm not the only person with a video like that on YouTube that goes over the fire safety rules. That's right. He's got resources available to him, free and expensive too, I'm sure. Uh, he constantly chose not to take advantage of any resources. He trusted. He trusted. Uh, it was complacency, man. Yeah, that's and, and you never trust anybody. And that's why I always tell people, don't trust me either. Like, just because I'm a fire instructor and I have a podcast and a YouTube and I've been doing classes for this many years, I was in the Marine Corps, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how long you've been doing it. Anybody can have a uh, negligent discharge. I don't like using the, the term accidental discharge uh, because some, it, all, there's always an element of negligence. It always roots back to that person's negligence, and that's definitely the case in this situation. Yeah, let's run it back one more time here for the guys. 
You guys can see what we're seeing here. Yeah, and she said yes. So I take the gun and I start to cock the gun. I'm not going to pull the trigger. I, I said, do you see that? She goes, well, just cheat it down and tilt it down a little bit like that. And I cock the gun. I go, can you see that? Can you see that? Can you see that? And she says, and then I let go of the hammer of the gun and the gun goes off. Words matter. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, no, definitely. I mean, and like I said, um, I think we should, uh, actually, we can. Let's go to that George Clooney part. Um, all right, let's pause right here for a second, guys. Yeah. All right, guys, now we're going to jump over to um, the George Clooney part, right, where you have one actor kind of talking crap about another actor or, or giving his perspective on it, right? So this, again, this is from the Alec Baldwin exclusive interview, part three. There'll be links to this down in the description, guys. Uh, again, we don't own this content, so. People said to me, I mean, I, I got countless people online saying, you, you idiot, you never point a gun at someone. Well, unless you're told it's empty. And it's the director of photography who's instructing you on, on the angle for a shot we're going to do. And she and I had this thing in common where we both thought it was empty, and it wasn't. You yeah, don't say. Yeah, that's yo, yo, real quick. So just so everybody's on the same page here, well, for one, we'll never get her side of the story. No. Right? And that's very unfortunate. You know, we're not trying to make light of the situation. No, trying to use it as a learning tool. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a teachable moment. So, um, actually, it's funny that he said that, Ryan, and I want to show you. All right, yeah. so here, we actually got something that, uh, let me see if I can pull this up on the big screen for you boys and girls. Ironically, Ryan, back in September, so a month and a half or whatever before this even happened, Alec Baldwin could have watched this video. Do they have YouTube in California, though? I think so. They do? So check right. this out. This is so kind of interesting. Yeah. Check this out. Points in time because mistakes happen. And we see far too often where somebody is crying their eyes out to a news camera after a tragic incident with a firearm. And they're saying, oh, my God, I thought it was unloaded. The gun was unloaded. I'm not sure how this happened. The gun just went off by itself. That's not true. Right. Obviously, if the gun went off and it struck and, and killed somebody or hurt somebody or anything, uh, obviously it wasn't unloaded. And obviously the gun didn't just go off by itself. Guns don't just go off by themselves. It takes a human being, whether maliciously. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. You guys want to watch more of that video? Make sure you subscribe. PTPgun.com, right? Basic Pistol Training. <laughs> That's Basic Pistol. It's an hour-long video. Whatever. That's our newest version, too. We had an old version we had for uh, a year or so before. For that, which you may have all said that in there too. That's right. So anyhow, what what we're seeing here? Let me go back here. I want you. You get the point. We're consistent. We're guys. saying this. We're not just saying this because Alec Baldwin. I've been saying this forever. That's right. Uh, and it's all. And we're note. We're noted on YouTube and timestamp September of having posted that. Um, it it's just again. It's it's to a certain sense basic common sense. And I will say, uh, I, I, I'm trying to. I really and I said this earlier. I'm trying to be somewhat fair. Dude, there's uh, no no. There's nothing to be fair here. He he should have cleared the firearm before pointing it at anybody. No, yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I like I want to pull his tape. I want to see how many of these, how many times has Alec Baldwin used firearms in a video, right? It, does he is he on record anywhere of being an expert? No, no. No. Like does he is he reg, a regular at a range? No. Right? I no. Have this that. guy this guy makes millions of dollars to play with toys, and then he shows up and he accidentally kills some. Kills he's somebody. he's literally a huge anti-gun advocate, and he's killed more people with firearms than I have, and I own <laughs> nearly a hundred of them, and I've shot them for years and thousands of rounds, uh, live rounds intentionally. And uh, Alec Baldwin has a higher kill count than I do. Yeah, man. I don't even know. Here, let's see if. Uh... Let's let's see if people are slandering this man yet. Let's hear what they have to say about it. Drop back over here. Beep. That's not her responsibility. That's not my responsibility. Whose responsibility is remains to be seen. But I do. Well, there are some who say you're never supposed to point a gun at anyone on a set, no matter what. That's me. He's talking about me. I say that. Unless the person is the cinematographer who's directing me where to point the gun for her camera angle. That's exactly what happened. That day, I did exactly what I've done every day of, uh, on that movie. Which is what? Which is that there's an armorer there, and, and that word is new to me. In the years I've been in this What did you call it? It was a prop guy or woman. And the prop person would come and sometimes... That's half his problem, is like, if, if, that's, if that's true, what he's saying is true, that means that he's been on scenes, on like uh, movie scenes and stuff, 
where they're half-assing it and they just have a prop person. The same person that handles all these other props also handles the firearms, which I don't know if you guys realize this or know this. And I didn't quite notice either going into this, but most, almost, if not all of the firearms that they use, they're actual firearms. Yeah, now no it is. No crap yeah. firearms. They're not prop guns. They're not blank guns. It's actually they are cheaper. actual firearms. It's actually cheaper. I watched a special on it. Maybe I'll... Guys, I'll try to find that video where I fo- or a link and I'll put it down in the description. But there was somebody that was talking about this and they needed a, a series, like a small armory of AK-47s to mm-hmm. be able to shoot this, this scene. Mm-hmm. And it was cheaper to go out and buy live AK-47s than it was to buy dummy guns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe it. Yeah. I really do. I mean, it is, it's cheaper for me to go buy a real Glock than it is for me to buy a simunition Glock. Which is a training gun that just shoots, yeah. you know, plastic pink filled capsules. Yeah. So, so I believe it. Who else? Uh, I think we want to get to the George Clooney part. Yeah, it, 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 they would coming. insist on demonstrating for you and the camera crew. They take the gun. If it was a contemporary gun, they show you the chamber. They show you the clip. They say, the gun is cold. Well, and you look and go, thank you. The clip. I know he maybe some other movies and stuff, but, uh, and I know what he means is clip and magazine, which are not the same. Uh, but when it comes to single action, there's no such thing as a clip or a magazine. But whatever, that's beyond me. And in the 40 years... Sometimes that would happen. Not all the time. Well, but no, no, sometimes they wouldn't demonstrate to me. Some insisted on demonstrating. They would do the demonstration for everybody there right before we rolled the camera. Or rehearsed. Then there were others who they didn't do that because I trusted them to do the job. And again, this is not just... Never trust another human being. Never put so like even if you if it's here, it is what it is. If you hand me a firearm, I'm gonna double check, make sure yeah, it's absolutely. loaded or not. Yep. And, the, um, and depending on what the situation is and stuff, and then what class we're in, if we're on the range and stuff, for like a handgun one, handgun two class, I might be handing you a loaded gun. But one, I'm gonna tell you that, and you're probably gonna just double check and confirm yeah. it. Yeah, you know, and likewise. So whether you're handing the gun off loaded or not, you should you know receive that knowing how it is and confirming that yourself. And right. if you don't know how to do that, then you shouldn't handle the firearm in the first place. That's you right. know, like in Maryland, you have to have a freaking uh, HQL and training for that just to be able to buy a handgun, which I'm not saying I agree with that or like that, but if you have like, if you have to have that just to be able to buy a handgun in Maryland, why? What state was this even in? Is this New Mexico or California, Arizona? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But either way, if you have to have if if if, if he has to have a, a HQL class to buy a handgun, and exercise his right. Mm-hmm. Why should some jackass actor with millions of dollars? Why should he skip that class to be able to handle firearms and point them at freaking other human beings? Uh, obviously, there's a uh, a problem here. Maybe if he was forced to get trained and stuff, that would alleviate this possibly, but but maybe not if he's sleeping in class. Super he looks like the kind of guy that was sleeping in a class. Me pointing a gun at somebody else, weed. people pointing guns at me. Well, I, I've gotten shot and killed in films before where people had to shoot a flash round at me, and I trusted them to do their job. And in the 40 years I've been in this business, all the way up until that day, I never had a problem. How many times do you think you handled a gun in those 40 years? Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. What, what amazes me is how many bullets, how many rounds of bullets do you believe have been fired on the sets of movies and TV shows in the last 75 years? Watch this memory pulls no out idea. his ass. Right. It could even be, be above a billion. Billion. <laughs> You've had like a, hundreds. Hey, that's like one billion. No, no, it's like Donald Trump. Billions and billions and billions. That's oh, right. That's my boy. <laughs> Send it. And hundreds of millions of bullets. I mean, it was like seeing aliens. And hundreds of millions of bullets. I mean, it was like seeing aliens. And hundreds of millions of bullets fired on the sets of films and TV shows. And four or five people were killed. Now, those deaths are, are, are tragic and abhorrent. And believe me, I would do anything in my power. I would do anything in my power to undo what was done. I don't know how that bullet arrived in that gun. I don't know. But I'm all for doing anything that will take us to a place where we're, it's, this is less likely to happen again. You know, it's hard to trust him. Every he's single active. time I'm handed a gun on a set, every time, Mark, they hand me a gun, I look at it, I open it, I show it to the person I'm pointing it to. We show it to the crew. Every yeah. single take, you hand it back to the armor when you're done. You do it again. Right. Everyone does it. Everybody knows it. How do you respond to actors? I like how, too, in there he said, like, even, like, because, uh, again, I understand there's necessary evils in the business of having to point a fire at somebody. Uh, he even said, like, 
if I'm pointing a firearm at you, I'm gonna have you clear it too. Right. You know, like you know, right. and that, that's uh, if if I'm gonna have if for some reason I were to be an actor or whatever, if for some reason I, I you were to point a firearm at me in, in this type of context, I would definitely want to verify that too. Mm-hmm. You're not allowed to point that shit at me until I at least verify. I don't care if you verify. I don't care if. It, the AD or this, you know, armor or whatever has verified. I want to verify it too, but I like how he brought that up too. Let's let him finish kind of. Just like George Clooney, you say that every time they were handed a gun, they checked it themselves. Well, there were a lot of people who felt it necessary to contribute some comment to the situation, which really didn't help the situation at all. So you have your, if, if your protocol is you check the gun every time, well, good for you. Good for you. George Clooney hadn't killed anybody yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, this obviously, guy acted like he, what he's doing is the right thing. He well, just if, killed somebody. If, if George Clooney with no kills under his belt wants to be extra, ultra safe, then good on him. But I am Alec Baldwin, and I've got wow. a kill in my belt. Like, maybe if you were a little bit more like George Clooney, you wouldn't be interviewed about shooting somebody. Man. Like, the guys, balls in this guy. Like, seriously. To be... <laughs> different world, yeah, I right? probably handled weapons as much as any other actor in films. There's, you know, there's different, obviously there's different people in Hollywood. Like, not everyone that's an uh, uh, actor and stuff that, you know, makes a lot of money and stuff and shoots guns in movies, not all of them are as negligent as Alec Baldwin. There's, you know, you got those Keanu Reeves out there, and I would say he's probably on that, you know, on that pedestal, while Alec Baldwin's down here getting interviewed about how he's shooting people and criticizing mm-hmm. George Clooney for being ultra safe and not having shot people. But, um... Let's see what we got going into next. Yeah, sure. Now, if you want on this 44 Magnum, you can shoot it single action. The next foot trigger pull. Did you mean to do that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, now we're going to jump into what we think maybe had led up to this. At least it's something that he's claiming. Now, this is from part one of the video. Guys, remember, all of these parts are going to be down in uh, part one, part two, part three. Everything's going to be down in the description, guys. You could, You could... Follow along there. But uh, right now, you know, everyone's asking a question. And, you know, Alec Baldwin's coming up with excuses Yeah, is what he's doing. We just Pass we just buck. showed you he's like, hey, I'm an average firearm shooter. I've been doing this in, you know, movies for 40 years, this and that, right? Uh, we talked about, you know, his past behavior with firearms. We talked about what the, what the other pundits and other actors are kind of criticizing him for. So what's he do, right? One of the very first things he does, so this is from part one. And although it's one of our last bits, it's something that we need to cover. What he's been trying to do all along, smart of him, is push the blame, right? He does, even in, when we first started this video, he's like, I never squeeze a trigger. And then when uh, people like George Clooney was calling him out, he's like, I've been doing this just as long as anybody else. I'm average. There's been billions of fucking, excuse my language, there's been billions of you know, bullets from rounds, his language, that have been fired on sets and only four or five people have died. He's like saying, it's not me, it's them, it's ever, it's the universe that's making this happen. And then what we're going to see here is um, now the coup de grace is, okay, it's not me, it's the gun. It's not me, it's industry. And now he's going to say, it's not an industry, it's the budget. So let's get into that real quick, guys. And prop master for the film. One of the things her attorney has said is that she was hired for two positions on the film and therefore was stretched in an inappropriate way. Did she raise any of those concerns with you? Real quick. Uh, Stretch in an inappropriate way. <laughs> Never mind. I was going to go. Hashtag gonna, me too. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to go in a really, <laughs> it's gonna go in a really weird way there. Let's get back into it, guys. No, I assume that everyone who's shooting a lower budget film uh, is stretched, myself included. And I, 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 got <laughs> I can't get that. Her. I'm oh. telling you, this is cringeworthy. I'm not oh, sitting there when shit. I'm this getting is... dressed and ready to go do a scene and say, oh my God, the prop woman seemed very harried today. <laughs> harried I, today. Guys, look, it's, I mean, there's so much, there's so much video here that we could show you guys on this. There's so much here, there's so much more, but at the end of the day, really, we wanted to, I mean, he's trying to blame everything. He's trying to blame Everybody but himself. Everybody but himself. Oh, it wasn't. I trusted the set director. I, I trusted the prop director. I, I trusted this. I trusted industry. It's not my fault. It can't be my fault. I did everything right. And it's just, it's nonsense, dude. It really is. It was probably the lady at the drive through at McDonald's the week before. That's exactly what it was. That's probably, yeah. It's probably what's got him so stretched so thin also. I'll tell you what. <laughs> tell you, in the studio right now, Ryan's definitely stretched a little bit too thin. Oh, yeah. You, I mean, hey. So, all right, again, guys, let's break it down for you one last time. So, 
I know there's a lot here. There's so much in this video. We could, I mean, we seriously thought about taking this and doing segment, 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 and really just making several videos because there is so much to break down. Um, if that sounds like something you're interested in, guys, please drop down the comment and say, hey, guys, you know, can you guys go more in depth on this? That was or, my idea. Yeah, it was Ryan's idea. So, so do you like my idea or you like his short and sweet and to the point? Short and sweet to the point. Put in the man. comments below. Hey, that's, that's what my wife likes. All right. So that's what I'm used to delivering. Hey. So anyhow. Hey, hey, me too. <laughs> me too. We got more similar than we know. Sorry, guys. We went. It's it's, uh, it's it's Yeah. All right. Let me bring it back home. So what we what we cover, guys? All right. So first of all, real quick. If you like this kind of slapstick humor that Ryan and I put together, throw us a thumbs up, guys. All right, it's the least, it's the least we can do. And more, if we can, we'll put, a car, we'll put a card below for a, uh, a podcast episode we did with us two as well as Shore Belly Farmer, uh, oh, yeah. where there's a lot of this going on in that. That's right. So. A lot of chuckles. But, um, guys, hit that subscribe button. Help us. Help, that really helps us so much. Um, so, yeah, what did we cover, right? Alec Baldwin broke the four fundamentals of safety, firearm safety. Um and so did old girl, uh, but we don't know because we weren't there, and and she's not here to tell us. So again, yep. we're very apologetic to her and her family. Guys, yep. are in our prayers and all that stuff. We're not trying to make light of that yeah. situation. Uh, Honestly, what we want is a teaching Alec, moment. Yeah, so it doesn't happen again. Yeah, so it doesn't. This was again. totally avoidable. And we want Alec Baldwin to be fucking held accountable. Let's yeah. be real. He really should. You know? I mean, again, and, and 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 I don't. On that note, I agree. I don't think that he purposely did it. I no. mean, it's just be, but there's no doubt that he did it. And I don't think there's any doubt that there was negligence on his part. That's negligent homicide. Hold him accountable. It's no different than if, you know, he does something wrong while driving and that leads to some, him hitting and killing somebody vehicular homicide. Uh, you know, again, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer either, so, but I do believe in accountability, yeah, especially absolutely. for something this serious when someone's life is taken. There should be yeah. accountability held. And that's what we're seeing, though. I mean, we're seeing, the, like, uh, let's just tie it all together here. You know, he broke the four fundamentals. Of fu he broke the four fundamental safety rules of firearms. And then, as we went into, right, then he tried to say, oh, this is just how we do things in industry. And then you guys saw it. We heard from uh, George Clooney. That's not really how... It's done in industry. That just happens to be how Alec Baldwin did it. And then whenever he wasn't getting enough from that, then he said, oh, it's it's the budget. We didn't have enough money to, you know, for what? For set safety? Like, I don't know, guys. But, you know, th there really is a lot more that we could put into this, guys. If you, um, if you have some experience in firearms, if you have a different take than we do, please drop down in the comments and let us know. If... Um, you know, if you're the expert on single action revolvers and you guys, and you can say, hey, you guys are just full of shit. You know what you're talking about? Come come see me. All right. There was those cowboy the action shooters. Yeah. Those guys are pretty cool. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I wasn't going to run this video, but since if you guys, <coughs> if you guys oh. stuck it out this long, let me show you. Uh, we got a video of Ryan here going full ham on the single action. So let me actually get that pulled out. I was just dicking around. They're fun. They're yeah, fun so there you guns. go. There you go, guys. But, Man, look at those meat beaters. I made that thing like a little pea shooter. <laughs> guys, please, please, please drop down, hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and share this video with a friend, guys. Throw us that thumbs up. It really does help take what we're doing here, take our production to the next level. Um, and as always, guys, uh, for me, train, defend, prevail. Stay strapped to get clapped. We're out.